What's up everybody, Soren Baker here on Unique Access, and today we got MC Ren. Thanks for letting us come through, Ren. No problem, bro. Yeah, man, and uh, Ren, you've obviously done and uh, been involved in so much in rap history, and one thing that I hadn't seen much talk about, if ever, was kind of like on the early Ruthless Records, the Stray Out Compton and the Easy Does It era records that you and Dre in particular did a lot of back and forth and a lot of harmonizing type of stuff. Right. And to me, when I heard it the first time, hearing it back in like 88, 89, I was thinking like the Cold Crush, the Treacherous Three, those type of things. Right, right, so right. So was that the inspiration or was there other reasons that you guys did it like that? I mean, we, uh, you know, Run DMC, they did it like right. that. And, um, you know, I remember one time we was in the studio, we put on Wild Style, that movie Wild Style. And they did a lot of that stuff in Wild Style. We tried to do that stuff in the studio and um, that's what came out. Yeah. So when you, uh, like Compton's in the house in particular, and obviously you had the remix for that, with that, with that record in particular, did you notice when you guys would perform it or or uh, be out on the road, did did that record seem to get a different type of reaction because of the way you guys were flowing or performing it? Nah, man. I mean, we the beat was like the main thing, you know, that beat, boom, 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 boom. That was like, we took that from EPMD. I think you a customer, the same beat. So, you know, everybody was just into the beat. They wasn't tripping off of how we were saying the rhyme, but uh, shit, it was dope, you know what I mean? It was dope. Going as rap has evolved uh, with Stray Out Compton and Easy Does It in particular, what do you notice about how you were writing yourself then versus how you either write now or how you see other artists write? I mean, back then, man, I was like a rookie, you know what I mean? Like writing, you know what I mean? like. In the times, all those records back then, everybody loved them records, but I feel like I could write better now. Mm -hmm. But people don't care about now, you know what I mean? They like, man, we don't wanna, we don't care about now, you know what I mean? They like, look at them records like, you can't top that, blah, blah, blah. But to me, I feel like, you know, I matured in my writing, the delivery, the styles, everything. You know, back then it was just, I thought I was good, but to me, if I wrote a rhyme today, to me, it's, it would be better. And what, uh, how do you think you've grown as a person? Because that's obviously been 20 years. Yeah, the same way like when people play instruments, you know what I mean? Like, if I, same way if I played a guitar back then and I've been playing all them years to now, I would be way better. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? But if I made hits back then that everybody loved and I try to make them like way, you know, make a hit 20 years later, they still gonna be like the stuff 20 years ago. You know what I mean? It's like when you go to a, like me, myself, like if I hear like Earth, Wind & Fire, do some new music, I don't want to hear the new music. You know what I mean? Like you want to hear the hits that they put out back in the day that you grew up listening to, same way. But you know, I guess, and I'm sure to them, they feel like we better now, but you know, people don't get over that. Right. Now that being said, uh, throughout your career too, um, you had a lot of, prominent solo releases so uh, one thing that Easy did and that Ruthless did and that you obviously were a part of was the whole EP phenomenon right so why how and why did you guys do EPs and, and why with the Kiss My Black Ass was that the first thing that you did was an EP the reason I did an EP first was because it would be quicker okay. than doing a whole album and I was like, man, I don't feel like, you know, because back then it seemed like it took forever to do albums. And I was like, man, I want to hurry up and put something out right now. So that's what I did. Quick EP. Let's get it in and get it out. And then what what made uh, that something that Easy was so into? I have no idea, man. <laughs> Probably the same reason I wanted to put mine out. You know what I mean? Just because it's fast, it's less time. You know what I mean? Less time, less money and um, you just put it out quick. Mm -hmm. And then um, you also were the one that, even though uh, there were always, you know, there had been people leaving with, whether it was Arabian Prince or Cube or Dre, right. stayed with Easy like for the longest period of time and everything. Right. But you also had more of a relationship with him before the music. Right. So why, why did you stay longer than everybody else? I mean, because I stayed longer, man, because I felt like it was the best place for me to do my music, you know what I mean? And um, I didn't want to go nowhere else because I didn't want to have to build no new relationships with no labels and them trying to tell me what I can and can't do. 
cool with Eric, it was like, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? And uh, I just always had the idea in my head, like, everything would get better, like, the whole situation. You know what I mean? Like, the money, everything, like, it'll get better. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I stayed. And did you feel the same way after he passed? Because obviously you stayed on Ruthless after uh, he had died. So right. is that the same philosophy you carried over there? I mean, yeah, I stayed. You know, they offered me more money. And yeah, I stayed on, you know. Okay. And then uh, another thing that I always thought, uh, getting to know you over the years, that I thought was interesting and getting to know, you know, Cube and Dre and to a lesser degree, Yella. Like, how, how did you guys really resolve like going from being friends, being together all the time, working together to really dissing each other really hard and then coming back and working together and being friends. Cause those were obviously very personal, right. heated exchanges. Right. Right. How did you guys move past that? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But when we got back together, it's like, really we didn't even talk about it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like we was in a room like, man, you said this. and. Nah, but you said that. It was like, we just didn't talk about it. It's just nobody talked about it. It was like, yo, let's get back together and do this. And when we got back together, it was just like, we just went there and did it. Nobody brought up the past. You know, it's like a family argument with everybody throwing stuff, fighting, and then the next day, it's like we all going out to kick it or something. Nobody mentioned it the day before. So that's how it went down. We just never really you know, tripped off of it. And was there, because uh, obviously everybody was slanging this is uh, back and forth. Was there one that you said that you particularly liked or one that someone said about you that you thought was particularly good? Um, Q's was good, I ain't gonna lie. His was good, his was good. But we never got it, we never, yeah, we never got a chance to do a whole record. See, he did a whole record. <laughs> We didn't even do a whole record. We did like I think a commercial. Slicing them in though. You had a poison or something. You had some in there. Nah, I didn't. Nah, nah. Dre had one line. Talking to your bitch, Ocean. That's Dre said that. I'm saying you as in end of the way. But yeah, I didn't. That's Dre said that. That wasn't like no record. We didn't do a record. Like you think back, we didn't do a whole record like you did. We, cause we broke up. You know, after his record. We broke, our group was breaking up all the way, so we never did a record. It was just like a commercial or something like that. So why did you do it that way? The commercial? No, why not do a record? I don't know, man, that's a good question. We never was like, had, we never was like, we gonna do a record on them. It was just like, we was doing Niggas For Life album, and um, Drake, you know, came up with the idea to do a commercial, like a skit or whatever. And he did that skit or whatever, and that was it. But it was like, nah, we wasn't in there like we finna do a diss record. You know what I mean? So. Gotcha. And then once uh, NWA did break up, for you, you know, what personally did you feel about it? Do you think it was just, you saw it happening, or was it like <clears throat> a surprise after, especially after Cube left, like it really breaking up for real? Yeah, when, uh, you know, after Cube left, it was like, you know, did 100 miles and running. You know, everybody was like, you know, wondering could we still do a record or whatever without Cube. 100 miles and running was all right, but when we did Niggas for Life, it was like, yeah, they could do an album without them. But after, shortly after that, that's when it, when Dre left, that was it. And I knew when Dre left, you know, we can't do a record without Dre. You feel what I'm saying? And, and E, he wanted to bring in like other producers to try to, and I was like, man, that's not gonna work. <laughs> nah, you know what I mean? It, it wasn't gonna work. It wasn't gonna work because if you got NWA, you need Dre doing the beats, you know, and the production gotta be up here and it wasn't gonna work. So obviously with the, the Niggas For Life album, the thing that I thought was amazing about it was it's the first rap album to hit number one. Yeah. So for you, uh, when that happened, did that mean anything to you? Or now when you look back, do you think of it uh, in a special or a different type of way, seeing how now they make such a big deal about number one albums and 
and the fact that it was independent, it was a gangster rap record, you guys did it, and it was after Cube, there was so much going on for it to be the first one. Well, back then, you know, it felt good, man. Um, but I, back then, everything was moving so fast. It's like everything was moving so fast, you didn't get a chance to really suck it up and let it sink in. You know what I mean? Like, for real. And I try to tell people that they don't get what I'm saying, but it was just like, everything was moving so fast and that short amount of time it, it didn't sink in and how big that was back then.